The other food source that I mentioned, Daphnia, is a freshwater organism that is tiny and the perfect size for your animal to feed on. Daphnia is very nutritious for your animal, however, they are much harder to obtain than newly hatched brine shrimp. So there are a few ways we can go about getting Daphnia. You can culture them on your own if you know how to, or you can go out and collect them on your own along with any other tiny organisms that may be present, which your animal will feed on as well. But again, whenever it comes to collecting any food source from the wild, just make sure you collect from an area where there are no contaminants. Your larva will continue to eat tiny organisms such as brine shrimp and daphnia for quite some time, even after they start developing their front legs first. At that point, they may still be too small to start eating frozen foods, but once they start growing their back legs, they may be big enough to start eating frozen brine shrimp. And once they get bigger, you can feed them in the same manner that you would feed your adults, except for earthworms, which will still be much too big for your larva to eat. That said, once your larva is big enough, you will be able to feed them frozen brine shrimp and frozen bloodworms or blackworms as well. Something very important to note is that as our larva grows, some of them grow at different rates than other larvae. Our larva, still going after other things that move, other larvae will become an option as food for them. They can become cannibalistic. So it is always best to start separating larvae as they get bigger so they don't eat your other smaller larvae. Now that all said, it's a good time to start talking about what foods are not suitable for your animal. I read a few guides out there and talked to a few people that try to feed their animals things that either aren't nutritious for your animal or things that your animal would never even attempt to eat in the wild to begin with. One of these poor food choices would be the Reptamin floating food pellets. They're not really nutritious for your animal and most of the time they're going to be refused by most newts, including the eastern newt. Because our newts eat at the bottom of the tank most of the time, a floating pellet such as this will not be noticed by your animal and just be flat out refused. This is especially important for newly acquired newts. Your newly acquired newts will take some time settling into their new environment in your setup. So you're gonna have to give them some food that's going to get their attention. Another very poor choice of food is feeder fish. Most of the time, even in the wild, newts aren't going to eat fish. They're much too big for the animal to eat. Not only that, feeder fish can cause obesity, they're not good in nutrition for your animal, and they can carry disease. And last but not least, and perhaps the one that makes the least bit of sense to me, mammal meat, or even bits of chicken. The thing is, simply put, this food is not good for your animal. It can cause obesity, and it's just simply not healthy for them. It doesn't provide the nutrition that they need, and it is something that they would never attempt to eat in the wild. Okay, now that we've covered which foods are suitable for your adult eastern newt and the larva, we can now move on to the terrestrial red eth. So we'll have to start by assuming that your larva newt just emerged onto land as a juvenile red eth. Because they are so tiny when they emerge from the water, finding a tiny food source can be tricky. At this tiny size, your red eth will go after smaller organisms such as dwarf white isopods, and they'll also go after springtails. So there are a few things that we can do to make our job a little easier. We can try to culture our own food sources. White dwarf isopods are among the easier ones that we can culture on our own. Bean beetles are another good food source as well at this size. As your red eft grows bigger, we can start to feed it more appropriate size food, such as appropriate size crickets, appropriate size earthworms, and we can also feed it fruit flies and live blackworms. The thing to note here is that our red eft is going to go by sight while hunting for food. Once they notice the live food, they will actively seek out their food and eat it. All right, before we get to breeding, we have to talk about an important topic if we are to establish that we want to breed our animals. And that topic is tank mates. Among one of the most common questions is what can I put in the tank with my newt? The short answer, other newts of the same species. 
adding other tank mates that are not the same species as your animal could potentially stress out your newts. So we'll break down a list of acceptable tank mates and we'll also go over what is not acceptable. We'll start off with what is not acceptable as a tank mate for your newt. A common first pick as a tank mate for our newts are usually fish. The problem with fish, however, is that fish can cause a lot of stress to our animal. And not to mention that many fish have different requirements for care than our newts. A lot of fish, especially tropical fish, cannot tolerate colder waters, as our newt requires cooler temperatures in order to thrive. Many fish are also quite aggressive, so we don't want them going after our newt. And if they are too big and attempt to eat our newt, remember the eastern newt is toxic and could potentially kill your fish if eaten. And if we end up being successful in breeding our newts, fish could potentially eat our eggs that we get from our newts and the larvae that hatch from them. The conclusion, I would highly suggest staying away from all fish as tank mates for your newts. Another common choice of tank mates for our newts are other amphibians, and there's many issues with this as well. Many other amphibians have different standards of care that don't meet the same requirements as our eastern newts. When it comes to other amphibians, frogs are chosen to be tank mates as well. The problem with frogs is that a lot of them get big, such as common green frogs, and tree frogs are not aquatic at all, so your tree frog will drown in the aquatic setup that we need for our newt. Firebelly toads require warmer waters than our eastern newt, or other newts for that matter, and the African dwarf frog also gets quite big and can be aggressive. Again, the goal here is that we do not want to stress out our animal. Larval newts and salamanders can be cannibalistic towards each other, and terrestrial adult salamanders, depending on the species, can eat smaller salamanders. So we have to really be careful when we choose our tank mates. Remember, all newts produce toxins, some stronger and more harmful than others. So we don't want any harmful interactions that may occur when mixing different species together. So we've gone through some pretty common problems when it comes to choosing tank mates. We have to remember, when it comes to choosing tank mates, a same species only tank is the safest way to go. Remember, all newts and salamanders, however similar they may be, are still quite different from one another. So that all said, what is a safe tank mate? Well, we can choose a tank mate that actually benefits our aquatic setup. Snails and shrimp are very beneficial to our setup. Snails and shrimp clean up the leftover waste of uneaten food or other debris found in your tank. Adding snails and shrimp to our tank can provide another benefit. They can occasionally become a nutritious snack for our animal. Snails, because they're slow moving, will usually go unnoticed by our newts. Shrimp are much quicker and can easily escape. Depending on the species of your snails and shrimp, they can tolerate much colder waters as opposed to fish. So when we put our eastern newts through a winter cooling period, we need not worry since they can tolerate these low temperatures. When choosing shrimp, just keep in mind the cost of buying shrimp. Ghost shrimp are much cheaper than fancy shrimp such as cherry shrimp. Cherry shrimp also can't quite tolerate the freezing temperatures that will occur when we go through a winter cooling period. These creatures will last long in our tank, and they are very peaceful partners for our newts.